Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, and the father of the Effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you to speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English effortlessly. You speak English confidently. You are understood when you speak English and you understand. When you train and commit to my VIP program, commit and don't quit. That's really the key. To success. Commit, don't quit to my VIP program today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to that website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, and then commit, don't quit. We have our book club show today. We are on part seven of the book. Uh, there are eight parts. The last part are just some stories, so I'm not sure. We might be finished today. I don't know if I'm going to do part eight, honestly. I'm not, I don't think it's so important. Uh, I don't think we're going to learn anything new from part eight. So this may be the last one. I'll tell you uh, this week. I'll make a decision. On, and I'll tell you on Twitter and Gab if we are going to do the next part or just finish the book now and then we'll move to our next book. Our next book is a deep book, a heavy book. Heavy meaning emotionally heavy. Um, it's a serious book, although disguised as uh, satire sometimes. But um, anyway, the next book is Brave New World. But we're not doing that yet. We're, today we're still doing How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. That's the book name and the writer, Dale Carnegie. Today is part seven. Now, as usual, we are live on Facebook for video, for the video, of course, the audio podcast recording is also always available to you after. Good to see lots of people. Hey, Cardo, nice to see you. And uh, our usual folks, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to go fast. It's a little late for me. It's already almost nine. My wife has to go to bed soon. I have to take care of a baby. So I'm going to skip the hellos today and jump right to our book. Okay, let's go. we got to move a little fast today and the, the show might be a little bit shorter. I must take care of this baby. All right. So we have part seven. I'll put it on the screen for a minute. We have part seven. I'm just going to go again. I'm going by the summary of part seven. So part seven has six techniques or rules. And again, it's just a, you know, this whole book, as I said before, it's just a big book full of techniques. Techniques, mindsets, attitudes, beliefs to help you stop worrying and start living. Exactly what the title said. So it's not a big philosophical book. I mean, there are some deep things. The, the chapter about prayer was pretty deep. But um, overall, I'd say it's not super deep. It's just very practical. It's self-help. This is a classic self-help book, which means it is designed, this book designed to give you tools, T-O-O-L, right, tools, to solve a problem. And the problem is the title of the book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And then he gives you, I don't know, 30, 40 different ways to do that. So very practical, very direct simple and useful that's why i like the book so as usual it's just a list of different even more things you can try so if you do worry a lot if uh you worry too much and you're unhappy just pick some of the you know you can't use all of these there are too many in the book you can't do them all at the same time it's much too much so how you use this book is you when, when we're, you're reading, you see a technique or an idea or a mindset, an attitude that sounds good to you. You think, ah, that one sounds powerful or that one's good for my situation. And then just take that one and use it. 
Okay, you can ignore other ones. Maybe some of them you hear them and you think, eh, that's not very useful for me. That sound doesn't sound powerful. I don't like that one. It's fine. It doesn't matter, right? I said there are 30 or 40 of them in the book. You only need maybe five or six or seven of them. Maybe even really two or three of them could change your life a lot. Could really help you defeat worry and start living and start enjoying your life more and worry much less. So you only need just a few of these techniques that you use. You have to actually use them though, right? Use them consistently. So that's the key. So again, as usual, just listen to them. If you don't like one, just ignore it. And when you hear one you like, maybe you can try that one. Here we go. Now this uh, section is a little more focused on energy, right? Because sometimes we worry and we feel stressed when we're really tired, right? When we're, we become stressed, then we become tired. When we're tired, it's easier to be stressed. When we're stressed and tired, then we worry all the time. We, we lose mental control. We lose emotional control when we are uh, tired. So a lot of the techniques today are about keeping up your mental and physical and emotional energy, keeping higher energy and also just more positive energy, right? Not negative, worrying, but positive. So number one is technique. This is a very general one about keeping higher energy in life. Rest before you get tired. So that's interesting. He's saying that we all you need to kind of plan restful times for your life. That means every day, you know, daily, but maybe, you know, also weekly and, uh, you know, monthly and annually. So what he's saying is, you know, if this is prevention, in, instead of waiting until you're super tired and then you, uh right until you're too tired and you get stressed out or maybe you get sick right some people they work 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 or they they worry 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 and they never rest and they don't rest and they don't rest and then finally their body just kind of breaks they just get they get really sick and uh tired and feel terrible um so he's saying don't do that you know plan your rest plan your rest so every day you need to have some times during your day where you have some quiet time where you're just very restful and at peace. This helps to rest, rest your body, but also rest your mind and your emotions too, where you just have a calm mind. Now, one great way to do this is meditation. We talked about this before. Uh, meditation and prayer both can be very, very restful. So planning that every day, once or twice a day, doing that is a great way, uh, especially mentally and emotionally, to rest. Some people like to take a nap right? Um, I don't take naps every day, but when I'm really having a maybe a hard time, uh, I'm really tired, I'm not getting enough sleep at night, like last month with the babies, uh, then I will take a nap. I'll take a nap in the afternoon, and that helps me a lot. It's usually late afternoon is a good time for me, and after I take a nap at that time, when I get wake up from my nap, maybe just 30 minutes, um, I feel much, 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 much better. Uh, you know, in general, I tend, usually for me, like I, I have very slow mornings. I don't like to get up fast and start working a lot and hurry, hurry, hurry in the morning. I hate that. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Morning in, overall is my rest time. You know, I, w I like to wake up slowly, start the day slowly, have a cup of coffee, have some breakfast, sit around. Now with the babies, you know, just hold the baby, play with the baby a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, just a couple hours doing that. And then I'll do some exercise, but not like crazy hard exercise, just some push-ups or pull-ups or something like that. Then I'll go for a nice long walk and then I'm ready to work. So I have several hours where I'm really very restful. And typically at night, again, at the end of the day, I'll do the same thing where I'll be pretty quiet and more restful. So overall, it's just a good, it's a good idea. Rest before you're tired. Rest before you're totally exhausted. Plan some rest time in your life. All right, rule number two, what he calls rules. These are just techniques. Technique number two, learn to relax at your work. Okay, and so he's saying that, you know, some people, not everybody, but some people are very stressed out at work 
And when they're at work, they're just, you know, work, 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 worry, worry, worry all the time. And he's saying that even when you're at work, you know, eight hours a day, maybe, that you need to plan some relaxing time at work. You can't be, you know, totally focused and working hard and stressed out all the time, even at work. You know, you have to plan different times in your day to take a break and have a little time to just relax. Maybe drink a little tea or coffee or whatever. Read a book or take even take a nap. Um, so that's a good point. And then the next uh, technique is um, similar. It's the same thing, but at home. Learn to relax at home. Um, some people don't do this. I have a, um, a, a relative in my family who's like this. Uh, like he just... Uh, he works, 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 works when he's at his job. And then when he comes home, he never relaxes. He, he just works at home also. He's always, when he comes home, he's you know, always, you know, fixing the house and fix, you know, cutting the plants or the grass outside or repairing something. So it's like he never stops. He never, never, never stops. And then, you know, he, you can see he's starting to get burned out by it. And so some people just don't relax. I've never had this problem. So like this rule two and rule three and even rule one, these these rules, these techniques, I should say. Then I don't like the word rule for this, but these techniques for me are actually not so useful because I, for me, this is very natural. <laughs> I have no problem relaxing. Um, my problem is usually on the other side. So, but some people do have that problem. Some people really have a hard time just relaxing and this creates a lot of stress and then that creates worry and it's not good okay next is another uh next technique number four it has four parts but he's talking about working habits work see one one thing people worry about sometimes is work this is also for school students okay um for example, procrastination, right? So a student, maybe you did this as a student where you, uh, you know you, you have a class and you know there's a big, big paper. You have to write a big paper for the end of the semester for the class. And what do you do? Well, if you're like me, what most students do is they wait until the end. They wait until the last week, the week before. The paper is due, this big paper they have to write. And the whole time before this, during the whole semester, they're, it's, they're constantly kind of worrying about it. They're kind of thinking, of, oh, I have to write that big paper. Oh, I must write the big paper. And they just try to push it away, push it away, push it away. And this starts to create more stress and worry, especially as you get closer to the end of the semester, right? And then what do you do? Then the last week or sometimes even the last day uh, awake all night typing 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 super stressed out trying to write this huge paper finally at the last minute so this is the kind of thing he's talking about that this creates stress and worry also this kind of working habit is not very good so he's got some um four tips here in this part one he says clean your desk of everything except what you're working on right now I've never been very good at this, but, you know, keep your desk clean. Just put one thing you're working on now and then everything else, you know, organize it somewhere else. Maybe helpful. Uh, B, tip B in this for this technique. This is a good one. Do things in the order of their importance. Okay, this is called prioritizing. A priority means uh, uh, something is important. So you have top Priority means it's the most important, right? So he's saying is do the most important work first. We learned about this with the Seven Habits book, right? First things first. Do what's important first. So if you have five things, which one should you work on first? The most important one, right? So that's a good, we already know. We learned that one with one of our other books, but it's good. It's, it is a good, um, it's a good technique. This other one's very good. I like it. When you have a problem, solve it immediately if you can. Too many people, they have there's a problem or they, they need to make a decision, but they wait. They're like afraid to make a decision. 
So they have all the information they need. They're not going to get more information, but they just kind of, they're not sure. They're unsure. They're, they don't know. It's not, a lot of decisions are not, you're not sure. It's not 100%. You're like 50-50 or 60-40. You're not sure. So what do you do? You push it away. Oh, I'll decide tomorrow. I'll decide later. That creates a lot of stress because then it's in your mind all the time, waiting, waiting, creating some worry. He's saying if you already know, if you have all the information necessary, make fast decisions. Just decide. Just do it. Even if you're not sure. You have to make a decision so there's no point waiting. Just make your decision as fast as possible, immediately. Solve the problem immediately and then forget it. Move forward. And then the next part is just saying he's saying you need to organize. Stay organized. Sometimes if you're at work, get some get some help, get someone else to do some parts of the job, that kind of stuff. Really basic stuff, really. All right, next technique, he says, uh, to prevent worry and fatigue. Fatigue is tiredness. Put enthusiasm into your work. So be enthusiastic. Be positive and uh, excited about your work. Even when the work is not great, maybe it's not super interesting, try to keep a very energetic, positive attitude about your work. This will make you happier. You'll be you'll worry less. You'll be less stressed. You'll actually enjoy it more just by changing that attitude. And finally, um, he talks about insomnia. Insomnia means uh, you can't sleep. You can't sleep. It means like a lack of sleep, a problem problem with sleeping. So you know it's like you you're at night. You want to sleep, but you can't, right? No, you just stay awake. You stay awake, and then you get stressed out because you're worried. Oh, I'm not going to be able to sleep. Huh? And you're, then you're stressed about lack of sleep because you know, you know tomorrow you have to wake up early. And this can create a lot of worry and stress, especially if this happens more than one day. So he says, remember, no one was ever killed. No one ever died by lack of sleep. Worrying about insomnia is what does the damage, not the insomnia. So he's saying that you know, it's not fun when you can't sleep, but it's not going to kill you. And in fact, it's, no, it's really no big deal. Um, it, but when you worry about it and you get stressed about it, that's what makes it much, much worse. So if you can't sleep, you know, he suggests... Just just read, get up and read a book, get up and watch a video, get up and do some work, um, whatever. Don't, don't just don't get stressed about it. It doesn't matter. You'll be OK. I found this out last month myself. <laughs> last month, I got almost no sleep last month, very little sleep. And I realized, yeah, I survived. Some some days were very miserable and I was very, very, very tired, but I survived. And, you know, it's nothing to be afraid of, really. All right, that's all pretty basic actually today. These uh, suggestions, these techniques are pretty simple. So I don't have a lot more to say about them. They're, I think they're all quite easy to understand and they're useful. Again, you know, some will be useful for you, some will not. Like the ones about relaxing. For me personally, I don't, I don't need that. But I know other people that do need those. I know some people who just cannot seem to relax. It's always seems strange to me, but, you know, everyone's different. All right, well, let's go to comments and questions because we have to have a little bit of a shorter show today. Like Dodd says, sometimes one night before an exam in school, you can't sleep. Yeah, right, or a job before a job interview. Uh, sometimes before a trip, right, you're, you're excited. You're going to travel somewhere. Or, or you have an early flight the next day. You got to get to the airport early. You know, these are all things that can cause a lack of sleep. And so you're just a little tired the next day. It's okay. It's no big deal. Hey, Carol, good to see you. Luna says, Hi, AJ. I'm from Algeria. We listen to your videos and make a great debate at school. A big hi to my group, Zakmaku. And my teacher, Ben Fodil. Nice. Thank you. 
a nice picture of an owl. And hello to all of you too in Algeria. Hi to your group. Ah, this is interesting. I hope uh, it's an Arabic name, so I can't read it, unfortunately. But um, I hope you make books about raising children in the future. I'm sorry about my bad English. I'm in your VIP program. Your English is totally fine. No need to apologize. And uh, I might write a book about raising children. I definitely plan to, um, I don't know, a book or videos or a course, something about homeschooling. Uh, maybe a, a homeschooling guide for parents, something like that. Because that, I'm very, very passionate about that. Um, I already have some pretty good ideas about it that I will be using with my own children. But I want to experiment, <laughs> try them on my kids first, and then I'll let you know. But uh, I'll be talking about homeschooling a lot more as my children get older and I start to do it with them, even starting at a very young age. And I'll be sharing, you know, what I'm trying, what I'm doing, my successes, my failures, all of these things, uh, because I very much want to encourage uh, everyone to teach their own kids, teach your own kids, homeschool your children. For sure, I'll do that. We can all share. If you, are, if you homeschool children, please share your um, techniques and your successes and, and your ideas, please. We all can use that. Yeah, like Mikal says, um, sometimes I can't sleep, so I wake up in the middle of the night and read a book or play video games, right? I mean, why, might as well, right? There's no point to lay in bed and be stressed and upset. So you can try for a while to calm your mind, but eventually, why not? Just get up and do something useful, and then you don't worry so much about insomnia. So again, insomnia means... Uh, inability to sleep you can't sleep it's the muhammad says english I, i'm not sure you're saying i'm an Eng i'm not sure if he's an english and geography teacher from the international school of benghazi libya if well if so hello to you reem Hello, when I talk, I become confused if the word is correct or not. How will I sort it out? You know, just relax. Try, you're thinking too much is the problem. You're analyzing everything you're saying, uh, which is going to make it... Then you can't talk naturally, right? If you're worried all the time and you're trying to look at and listen to what you are saying you know you just need to just when you're communicating just communicate as best you can you will make mistakes don't worry about it if you want to think about it if you want to analyze it do it after after the conversation it's finished then you can just use your memory and think oh no see did i what mistakes did i make or what you know how what you know what did i do how did it go but don't do it in the middle of talking it, it will just confuse you Clay says, I think worrying only sucks the happiness out of us. Yeah, that's right. It does indeed. Anya says, um, also, if I have a speech at that time, sleeping is not good. Yeah, me too. Right. Like, so when I've done presentations or speeches or seminars, usually the night before, I don't sleep much. Just I'm too, I'm excited and thinking about it. Now, Rafiko has a very practical um, advice, and he's correct about this. If I can get it to show on here. Come on. Okay. Rafiko. Regular physical activity can help reduce fatigue. Yes. By improving sleep. However, those who have not been physically active for some time should introduce exercise gradually. Yes, this is exactly right. Now, see, this is the other side of the technique um, that... The first one we talked about today, he says, plan, you know, rest, rest before you're tired. But you also, I think that maybe when um, Dale Carnegie wrote the book, <laughs> that was maybe the bigger problem. But today, I think the problem is not 
so much. Uh, the rest, I think the problem is what Rafikal saying is that people are too lazy and don't exercise enough. So I think actually today we need to add Rafikal's uh, advice, which is um, it's hard to sleep if you don't use any energy during the day, physically. Physically. I'm not talking mentally we use a lot of energy working, but often we're sitting and our physical bodies are not doing anything all day and then we can't sleep. And well, of course not. We didn't do anything. Our bodies feel like, well, there's no reason to rest because we've just been sitting around lazy all day. And uh, so exercise can very much help you get to sleep. It will improve your sleep a lot. Don't, well, some people... Uh, if they exercise at night, then that might uh, cause problems for sleeping because it energizes you suddenly. Some people, it doesn't, it's no problem. But um, just find the right time. But yeah, you do need to f use your body some. And this will encourage relaxation. Question says, uh, thanks so much for learning in uh, English. So beneficial. Thank you. Um, it says, I like you. I don't have any problems. Well, lucky you. Ah, Kong says, um, I know my aunt. She's so worried that she could about sleep. She tries a lot of drugs. She's doing nothing all day, lying in bed all day, trying to get sleep. Yeah, Kong, you know, uh, maybe give her some advice if she'll listen to do the opposite, to just stop worrying about sleep, stop taking the drugs. And then do the opposite. Go out and during the day, work, work, work hard. Physically. You know, walk all day. Work. Uh, do physical work. You know, like, gar I don't know, gardening or, you know, um, I don't know how old your aunt is, but, you know, dig in the dirt, do gardening, fix things. Uh, I mean, she can try doing a little bit of late weightlifting or some kind of physical exercises, even like some kind of uh, uh, yoga practices, physical yoga practices. Um, go for long, long walks or start learning to jog, but basically make herself very tired physically every day. And then at night, don't stress about sleep. Try, you know, lay down, try to sleep for a while. If it doesn't work, just get up and read a book or do something else. And eventually, you know, she hopefully can get back to some natural sleep. Another thing, actually, here's a, uh, my best advice for no sleep is meditation. Because meditation rests your mind. You know, um, I once did a 10-day meditation retreat, 10 days. Basically, just meditating all day for 10 days. And I mean all day. Wake up at 4 a.m. and start to meditate. And meditate all day until like 8 p.m. <laughs> all day. So 16 hours of meditation every day with a few breaks uh, and only two meals. So here's but what's interesting about this is that after the first day, I found during the meditation retreat, I didn't need much sleep. I could not sleep. Why? Because all day my mind and body were resting, right? I was, I was sitting all day, so my body was not working hard. But also, you know, meditation, just you're just clearing your mind of thoughts and it is, you know, become super calm and clear. So it's it's in some ways it's better than sleep because when you sleep, you might dream and uh, move around. But uh, meditation, especially after, you know, if you're doing it a lot like this, your mind becomes so calm, so rested that you you really don't you feel like you don't need much sleep, even though. I, I did not sleep much. I I would just lay in the bed and I could not sleep. So I would just meditate in bed. So really I was meditating like all day and most of the night also. But the next day I would wake up at 4 a.m. after a few hours of sleep, just a few, but I felt totally fine, totally, completely rested. So meditation is very, very good. This is another technique, a Kong you could mention to your aunt Really, anybody, if you can't sleep, practice meditation and do it more and more and more and more. And you might find that even without sleep, your body and your mind get 
plenty of rest and you feel good. Meditation can replace a lot of sleep. Gospel music is really good for our soul and our sleeping too. Hmm. I'm not familiar with, uh, with it very much, but it sounds good. Carlinos says, good morning, my beloved and great teacher and people around the world. Good morning, good evening from Japan. <laughs> Lisa says, thank God I can relax everywhere, even at the dentist. Oh, wow. With their, you just kind of, nice. That's a good skill. Uh, Abdel says, when will you visit Egypt? I don't know. Someday, someday. Carol says, procrastination was one of my weaknesses, but as I became more and more busy, I had to be more disciplined and organize my time more efficiently. Everything is a question of finding the good balance. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, a little procrastination is no problem if you're not busy. It's just a couple things. It's not that bad. But as you be, if you become very busy, then procrastination can become very stressful. Okay, now here's a question, and my answer is going to be super simple. You're not might seem might seem like I'm joking, but I'm not. Uh, Alaman says I'm bad at reading. How can I come out from there? How can I improve my reading? You improve reading by reading. There are no techniques. There are no techniques. You just have to read more. And how do you do that? Now, so that's my simple answer. I'm not joking. Um, but what you need to do is read easier material. This is the key, right? What I find is a lot of people, a lot of students, um, especially students who have trouble reading English, they try to read books or newspapers, uh, articles, content that is much, much, much too difficult for them. And then it's super, super, super slow because they don't know most of the words. And it's not interesting, it's boring, it's difficult, and they think, oh, I'm bad at reading. You're probably not bad at reading, you're just trying to read things that are much too difficult for you right now. So what you need to do is find easier things. Find easier things. You can get what, there are things called graded readers. These are like simple stories. They, they find like a story, you know, like a famous story, and, but then they write it again using easier English, and they have different levels. So you can get things like that. You can get children's books or books for young people. Uh, you can find lots of these kind of things and read those first. Bef don't, don't read, try to read a newspaper yet. Don't try to read something very advanced. And just read a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of those easy things and you will just sort of almost automatically start to learn more and more vocabulary. You'll get faster. And then little by little, you read more difficult things. You read things that are a little more difficult, a little more difficult, a little more difficult until finally you're reading at a high level. Uh, so it really is just you get better reading. You just read more. That's it, really. Read more, but read easier things. Okay, Paolo with the question I uh, was mentioning before. When are we going to start the new book, Brave New World? I think we're going to start it not next week, but two weeks from now. Usually I take a, a break after a book. I'll... I'll wait two weeks and start a new book. Um, I think we're probably finished with this book. I think this is, a, this is the end. The last chapter of the, this book, I think, is just a lot of little stories. It's too hard for me to explain it. Nothing new in that part. So I think we're finished today with uh, this book. Next week, no book club. We'll take a break. This gives you time to find the new book. The new book is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. 
You might want to read this in your language first and then also get the English version because this is it's it's a going to be a more much more difficult book than this one today. Yeah, Muhammad Musa said is a good point. Uh, this is uh, all this is very true what he's saying. Most people today keep using mobile phones at bedtime, which makes it worse because the screen light because of the screen light, your body will stop producing melatonin hormone, which is a hormone that makes you sleep, which is very important to have a good and comfortable sleep at night. So please keep your phones away before going to bed. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. The light um, kind of tells your brain that it's still daytime. So it tells your brain to stay awake. It does not make the chemical, the hormone, melatonin, so you don't get sleepy. Uh, it's not not only phones, but like a big com computer screen can do this. A TV even can do that. So it is a good idea to turn off all your screens for a, a few hours before you go to bed. Just read a book or something. And even just even your normal lights, you know, turn them down. So a little bit lower light in general can help. I usually don't have problems with sleep, but these are things I've, you know, read about mostly. Gloria says, I'm getting ready for my Saturday class at the gym. Enjoy. Fantastic. Tawan says, what does EE -E mean? Effortless English. It's just my abbreviation. I get tired of writing it, so I put EE. -E. EE -E means effortless English. If you see me, write EE, -E, effortless English. And Bayabua says, do meditation. Basic um, advice here. Yes. <laughs> do meditation. Do it. It's helpful even just a little bit. Is, is helpful. I, you know, depends different times in my life. I'll do more or less. Uh, like right now, I'm really busy and I have to wait till the baby's not crying. <laughs> Sometimes I'm holding the baby, trying to meditate, you know, but even just a little bit helps. All right, I, it's almost time to go. I'm, I gotta go soon. Oh, nice, uh, ex Samula Samim has a nice success story. AJ, I'm so glad you're my teacher because of your efforts and instructions. I finally got my dream job recently. Great. I was selected for the post. Thank you very, very, very much, my honorable teacher, and I'm very happy. Hey, fantastic. Good for you. Excellent. I like to hear these success stories. So, you know, you did the work. I'm happy I can uh, help. I'm happy and give good advice or my lessons, whatever's helpful, that's great. But of course, you do the work. You have to do all those hours of listening, all the hours of doing it. So congratulations to you for doing that. <laughs> Gazina says, uh, AJ, you're very active these days. I cannot follow you anymore. Don't worry, it's not a no pressure. Okay, you can skip some shows if if I'm doing too many podcasts, just skip one, you know, or skip many. Just choose the titles that look interesting to you. Some people like every day, like I have, um, just for myself, I have a couple podcasts um, that I like to listen to uh, each day. And I like their daily, so I like it daily because... You know, I'm, especially now with the baby, I'm, I'm up late at night. I have nothing to do sometimes, so it's nice uh, to have a daily podcast. But if you're busy and, you know, you, you don't have to listen to all of them. Meditation, walk, work are good advice for a healthy person, but often when a person can't sleep, it's tied with depression. Well, and... Uh, all the more reason to do those things. Depression, exercise. I think the best uh, medicine for depression is hard exercise, hard physical work. A lot of it. 
you know, if you're depressed, go to the gym and do a really hard workout with heavy weights. I mean, squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, pull-ups, hard, 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 hard. So you are just uh, exhausted at the end of it. You won't be depressed after, I bet. You'll, and certainly you'll feel much better at the end of that workout. You'll feel much better mentally and emotionally at the end of that workout. Uh, and then do it again. <laughs> Two days later, do it again. Uh, another way, another great, even faster and easier, a very good way to improve your emotions like this. You're depressed. Imagine you're depressed. You want to improve your emotions. Do sprints. So put on some shoes, go outside and do a series of sprints. Sprints means you run as fast as you can, like right? 100% your fastest possible speed, let's say 25 seconds, All right? So you just go to go to a park or something, even on a, a road or anywhere, and uh, you get a little timer, and you run, you go, go, and then run for 25 seconds or 50 meters, right, or 100 meters, whatever. I don't, I don't know how long you can do it, but like it's just 25 seconds. I do by time. And I mean, as hard as you can. So whew, you, after 25 seconds, you are, you're breathing like that, okay? You're breathing really, really heavy. It is total maximum effort. Then you only rest for 20 seconds. Maybe 25, <coughs> right? So about the same amount of time you rest. Then you turn around and you run again as hard and fast as you can. Again, for 20 seconds or 25 seconds. Now you're going to be ah, ah, even worse. I mean, you're going to be exhausted. Do it five times. That's, you can do that in about, you know, what? In five minutes, less than five minutes. That's a less than five minute workout, but super intense. Again, I guarantee at the end of that, you're going to be tired. You might not. You might be <gasps> laying on the ground for about 10 minutes. <laughs> but emotionally, you'll feel better. Your depression will, uh, maybe it might disappear for a while, but it certainly will get much, much better. That kind of super hard, intense exercise. It changes the, chem you, it changes the chemicals in your body and your mind. It very powerfully changes you. In the moment, it changes, and also it will change it for you know, longer term. So you can do a sprint workout every, depends how old you are, how, you know, your fitness level, right? But you could do that, you know, maybe twice a week, two times per week. It would, it would really help that depression a lot. And many other things benefited too. In fact, I'm thinking of starting to do some sprint workouts again, because my time is so limited right now. It's hard for me to find a time because my baby's all the time crying and ah. So I need super fast workouts. I need short, fast workouts. So I'm doing body weight exercises, just very quick, like two minute workouts, right? Just fast, do a lot of pull-ups, do a lot of push-ups very quickly. Um, but I need to do something, a little bit something for my legs and uh, my you know, heart and lungs. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do what I just said. Just once a week, maybe twice a week. Usually for me, that sprinting workout, even once a week, is gives me a good benefit. So that's a great way to help with depression. The last thing you want to do when you're depressed is just sit around thinking. It's the worst thing. Okay, Alexi with a nice big comment. Let's see. Hey, Alexi, good to see you again. Hi, AJ. Nice to see you again. Mm-hmm. I want to share with you and the audience about my thoughts of the previous show, You Had to Go. Uh, as I'm getting older, I more understand how important and interconnected uh, making fitness the entire of our life and improving ourselves mentally and expanding our mindset using books, listening to other people, avoiding TV and the internet. The brain and muscles are one system. If you forget about one, you will be feeling bad, and this state will get worse and worse. If you're doing work, fitness, and listening to clever people, you'll be so much exhausted that you won't be able to focus on bad stuff. Well said, Alexi. Very well said. That's right. Mind and body, you know, brain and body maybe is a better way to say it, 
are one, you know, strong effect on each other. Just very connected. I didn't see this comment, but it's connected to what I was just talking about with depression. Uh, you know, I, I used to do, you know, count, I was a social worker and I would, you know, maybe do some counseling to help people who are sad and depressed. But quite honestly, I think hard exercise is a better therapy than just talking. I think it's better than any psychiatrist or psychologist is making yourself really healthy physically. It has a very good effect on your emotions. It's hard to feel bad when you feel fantastic physically, right? When you're strong and healthy and energetic, you naturally will feel better emotionally. And then, of course, the other side, Alexi said, you, you do also need to feed your mind. Feed your mind good, positive thoughts and ideas and books and people. And take care of these two things and your life will be very good. All right, I'm going to do two more and then time for me to go. Hasina with a nice comment says, uh, self-discipline whoops, and letting everything happen the way they are meant to happen is the key to reducing worry. It's kind of nice yin-yang, that comment, <laughs> right? <laughs> kind of like the two sides. On one hand, there's self-discipline, which is really about control. But controlling what? Controlling yourself, your mind, your emotions, your actions. So that's about control. But then the other side, letting everything go, letting go, letting things happen, accepting what happens. The opposite of control. But what? Talking about the outside world. So that exactly, where do you have influence? Where do you have the most influence in life? Where do you have the most control in life? Over yourself. That's where you should focus your energies most, self-discipline. Where do you have the least amount of control? Or sometimes no control at all, no influence at all. It's the outside world, other people. And in, with that part of the world, it's... it's usually best to let go and not try to if you try to control everybody else try to control the whole world you will go crazy and be destroyed can't be can't you can't do it nobody can do it okay carol with a quick comment and uh i'll tell you what i'll do carol's and one more and then time to go uh, Carol says, can we learn to meditate by ourselves? Yeah, you can. Yes. How did you learn? Because I'm struggling a lot with this. You're going to struggle. <laughs> so that's normal. Don't worry about it. You know, this most simple meditation, probably the best one to start with, especially when you're just doing it yourself, is to just sit in a nice comfortable position, you know, a nice good posture. Close your eyes. Focus on this area under your nose where the air comes in and out right, when you breathe and you just focus on your breathing, right? Specifically on the air going in and out at that point, you know, where you're, where it goes into your nose and goes out into your nose and then goes out. And the key thing is you just, you, you try to just watch it happening. Imagine you're watching it happening. Like you're above it. Right? You, you might feel the sensations, right? You might have little feelings of the skin there as the, as the air goes in and out. You, of course, you'll, feel, you'll also feel other things like your lungs moving, but try to focus your concentration on that one little point under the nose with your eyes closed. Now, the key thing with this is try, you don't, don't control your breathing. Do not try to breathe faster or slower. Do not try to breathe more deeply um, none of that. You just, it's more, you're like, you're just watching your own breathing. Just let the breathing happen by itself. Sometimes this is tricky. Sometimes you, your mind would, will try to control the breathing. It'll try to make it go deeper, for example, because you have some idea it needs to be more deep, but that creates tension and you're trying to control. So you just want to be observing it. You might even sometimes when I'm really, when I, when I have a really good concentration, when I'm meditating, I'll almost stop breathing for a while. Like I'll, I'll just, my breathing will become so small, so relaxed that I almost can't feel it anymore. 
but just let that happen. It's okay. Just, just so basically, you're not doing anything but focusing and noticing, and that's all. Now, what else will happen <laughs> when you're doing this? Your mind will go crazy, Wah! right? All these thoughts and feelings and things will come into your mind, constantly distracting you. That's also normal because our minds are so distracted and busy. So what do you do? You just let them go. Let them come. Let them go. The thoughts come. Let them go. Don't follow them. Don't hold on to them. Sometimes you will follow them and hold on to them because of a habit. You don't, and then you'll realize after one minute, after two minutes, you'll realize, oh my God, I'm not meditating. I'm just thinking about what I need to do tomorrow. I'm thinking about yesterday. That happens. So when you when this happens, you just... Bring your focus back again to your breathing under your nose. Let all those thoughts just go away. Bring your focus back. Bring your concentration back again. And it's this, it's, this is what's going to happen. You're, you're going to become distracted and then you bring your attention back to the breathing. And you try to focus it, focus it, focus it, focus it there. And then you get distracted again. Uh, bring your attention back to your breathing. Then you get distracted again. Bring it back to your breathing. And it's endless. Although, as you do it more, the distractions become less uh, frequent, less often, and they become less strong. So your concentration improves. In other words, what happens as you practice more, your concentration gets better. You stay focused just on the breathing longer and longer and longer and the concentration is stronger and stronger and stronger it's not every day though some days you'll be more distracted some days you'll have better concentration but that's how you do it that's it it's really the simplest thing in the world <laughs> it's it's not complicated it's but it is difficult right it's not but it's not complicated the, the actual technique is super super simple concentrate on your breathing that's it there are other ways of uh, meditation. You can use sound, like a mantra. You can. Uh, there's vipassana, which uh, where you focus on body sensations. Uh, there are many other ways, but uh, I think the breathing one is the simplest and the best to start with. And really, even let's see, you can just do that technique only <laughs> for your whole life, and it can be very beneficial. So, good luck to you. Don't get discouraged by the distractions. It's part of it. It's just part of it. It's, it'll teach you patience. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take one more and then it's time for me to go. Okay, Vladislav with a comment about our next book, and then time to go. Vladislav, good to see you again, as always. Uh, hey, AJ, I read part of Brave New World in English. I agree, it's quite difficult for a non-native speaker. Yes, it is. It's especially difficult to see the deep meaning, right? But with you, it'll become much clearer. Yep, that's my job. That's why I want to do it as the book club, because um, I think it is probably uh, for, for non-native English speakers, even when even advanced, you know, you many of you are fairly advanced. But um, it, I think reading it, you know, in English, understanding it completely and also seeing the deeper messages, because uh, the whole book is has a very uh, specific message messages you know it's about very specific things it's about mind control political control uh it was uh showing the techniques real techniques the real methods that you know the rich and the powerful use against us the people at the top and uh it also showing what kind of world they are trying to create now, he wrote this what i think is 1930s much of it is true already. They, they, they have succeeded. We will see when we read Brave New World that very, a lot of it is already true. And when he wrote it, it was not, but he was correct. This is why, you know, another, what shows us that Aldous Huxley, the writer, he understood this topic very well. He knew 
because he predicted so much. So did Orwell and, you know, 1984 and, and um, Animal Farm, of course, also very good and also uh, very accurate. But we'll see with Brave New World. So, yes, that's why I want to do it as a book club, because it might be quite difficult for you just by yourself to do it. But, you know, it'll be my job then to uh, I'll try to help you with some of the vocabulary, uh, but especially with understanding the story and especially understanding the messages in the story that because it, there, it's a very important book. It's a very, very important book for us now, I believe, because it is it shows what's happening and why. You know, sometimes people think like what the, the world has gone crazy, right? The, the, the media has suddenly, especially in the last few years, has gone totally crazy. Movies, TV, the fake news, all of this stuff, like totally crazy. And they're pushing all this crazy stuff, this disgusting stuff. And sex and and drugs and pleasure and um, you know tra the transgender weird stuff and all this other things and and people confused by it don't understand why or, you know it's it's all weird and terrible but why why we're going be, we'll learn why Brave New World shows us why and what are they doing and why are they doing it. These are methods of uh, destroying people's um, thinking and controlling them. That's what Brave New World's about. It's super important for our world today to understand this so you can look around the world and see, and then you'll understand it much better. And when you understand it, you can fight against it in your own life and for your own family. So that's why I chose the book, why it's important, and I will certainly do my best to help you understand it. But I also I do recommend, if you can, read it in your own language. This is a famous book. It's an old book, and it's famous. So there are many translations in many, many, many languages. It's probably a good idea to read a translation. Uh, maybe do that this week if you can. Get a translation in your language and read Brave New World in your language. So then you'll have, at least, you'll have an understanding of the story. You'll, you'll know the story from your own language. You'll understand it. You might even see some of the messages if it's a good translation. Well, this will help a lot. Then when we do the English version, you'll be much more ready. All right, I've got to go take care of a baby, so we have a short, a short one today. But remember, I'm interviewing in um, a day and a half. I will interview uh, Acharya Ji, which is great, about the topic of natural law, a topic we have talked about a lot. And uh, he is a Dharma teacher and a, just a superb, I, the best one I know. And so I'm very much looking forward to, um, really, I'm not going to talk much. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him questions and let him talk. But I'm, I'm looking forward to his uh, answers. I've got some interesting questions, I think, about natural law. I hope you'll find them interesting, too. So until then, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Lots of love to you, and I hope you enjoyed this book. We finish another book. The next one is a heavy book. It, it's, it's a serious book, but um, important. All right, lots of love to you. As always, join my VIP program where I train you, I teach you, I help you speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English effortlessly. You speak English confidently when you commit to my VIP program. You commit. You don't quit. You commit. Today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Commit. Don't quit. Commit to my VIP program. You will succeed with your English. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.